slow queries in particular circumstance. And this circumstance is this. Each night we update all the rows in our customer table with the recalculated credit stores, but the next day queries seem really slow. They do get better during the day, but what is happening? It's all about blocks and what's in them. Let's get some terminology covered off first. Most of the database consists of things that consume space, and we actually have a collective term for this. We don't refer to things that consume space in Oracle as tables, indexes, or clusters. We group them together and we call them segments. Anything that's a segment is something that consumes space in the database. How do they consume space? Well, they consume it pretty simply. They must occupy space in files. That's what all things on a computer do. Those files are broken up into what we call extents. So as a table grows, you get given one extent. It's a chunk of storage inside a file. And so each extent consists of a file because you can have multiple files in a database or table space. So we pick one, we grab an extent out of there. It has a starting position. It starts at a certain point in that file and that extent has a length. So segments are made up of multiple extents and those extents live in certain spots inside a data file. And inside those extents are the Oracle database blocks that make up your index or your table, etc. You can actually locate all this information yourself. This isn't all hidden from view. If you actually want to see where a table sits, you can actually go look at DBA segments and there's two entries there called header file, header block. Also, there's a view called DBA extents, which actually has for every single extent for a given segment, what file it's in, the file ID, where that segment starts, the block ID, and how long it is in terms of blocks. All that information is readily available to you, and we can actually see with a simple example that in real life, I create a table called T, I put one row in it, I can go look at DBA segments to find out the first block for that segment called T. It's in file 35, block number nine, and if I want to get really deep and dirty, I can actually dump that block out to a trace file, or I can dump a range of blocks, but let's say I've dumped out just the first couple of blocks, it looks like this. You can see there it's file 35, block number nine, and the, we have a thing called the block type. It's the data segment header. It actually doesn't contain data for your table. It's the first block that contains all the metadata about where I can start finding the extents, what kind of thing it is, etc. So it's like that your first pointer to where the rest of your table is. The second block is actually a type of trans data, transactional data. And we can actually see if we sort of look down the screen here, it says it's a data block dump and it has some information. And then finally, you can see right in the bottom, it has block row dump and it has, you have to start things, seeing things like the columns, etc. But the part in orange here is what we call the block header. Every block has some information at the start of it, which isn't the data on your table. It's information about the block itself. And this is actually in the concepts guide. You can actually see it says that every block consists of the common and variable header, the table directory, the row directory, free space, and then finally, your stuff, your real data. But the key thing is every block has this thing, this common and variable header. And if we look at it, one of the things you'll see on that block header is a thing called the system change number. That is like the arrow of time, the uh, effectively the timestamp in numeric form of every single change that happens to the database. The first change, SCN number one, the second change, SCN number two, etc. for the life of the database. Every block has a system change number on it, which means every time I do a commit, every time I make a change to a row, which makes a change to a block and commit, I need to update that SCN because I've changed the system change number. That's what it was originally. I commit and there's a brand new system change number. Every block has an SCN and if you update every block, and commit that transaction, then you need to update every SCN. Now that's a real nightmare because you end, remember we pick the SCN at commit time. So I've gone through this entire table and updated all the data I need to millions and millions of rows. Then I do commit. Now I have to go back and update the SCN on all those blocks again. That is going to kill you in terms of performance. When we see inside the Oracle database things that are gonna be a real performance hassle, for customers, what do we do? We do our best to avoid it. So we're lazy. Why would you go back and update all those blocks? You know, maybe we don't have to, maybe we can just ignore it and I'll come back to why we can ignore it shortly, but let's look at a demo first. 
So what I've done here is I've shrunk my database SGA down to a very small size. It's only 300 megs for the buffer cache. That means that most reads I do will come from disk, which is a good way of monitoring what's going on here. I'm going to create a table here, which is 40 copies of DBA objects. That'll be, I don't know, somewhere in 8 million rows, somewhere around there. But it's, it's a nice, hefty table. I'm going to flush the buffer cache. So I'm going to see how long it takes to get all the information, at worst case, all physical reads. There's 3.4 million rows in there, and it took 1.45 seconds to query this table top to bottom. If I run it again, it'll be a little bit faster. I oh, know it's about the same, right? Because it's all coming from disk. Now we're going to do this update where we change every single row in the table. While this going, I'll talk about how Oracle is lazy. As I said, we have to update every single row and then we do a commit. Theoretically, we should go back and update every single block to put that SCN number in there. Now at Oracle, we're lazy. After you commit, we want to give you that instantaneous commit like we just saw on the screen there. We're not going to go back and fix all that up. We're going to leave all those blocks that we've updated with correct data and what you could interpret as a corrupted SCN. The wrong SCN is in those blocks. We're not going to go back and fix it. That seems odd, doesn't it? But that's what we do because we want to get that commit to you super fast. Now that I've updated these 3 million rows, we're back on our demo. I'm looking at some particular stats here that have the word clean out in them. And the only real thing you need to worry about these ones is currently they're all near zero. We did this huge update. It took a long, long time. The commit should have taken a long, long time, theoretically, if we're going to back and re-put all those SCNs in there, but we didn't. We simply said, ah, let's not bother. Let's make that commit super snappy. Now, as I said, we've got all these incorrect SCN numbers littered throughout our table. Let's now run a query against that table. Remember the first one was 1.4 seconds? Now it's 2.7 seconds. If I look at my stats, notice now all these cleanout stats have bumped up a lot. What we do is this. We say, the person who's updating, doing all this volume work, we're going to reward you at commit time by just leaving all those dodgy SCNs floating throughout the table. But someone has to pay the fiddler, so to speak. The very first person that queries that, those blocks, they'll read that block. They'll say, I want to get a consistent read. Here's an SCN number. That isn't the right SCN number for this block because I can lose that SCN. I can go hunt down some under information. It's either not there, which means it must be committed, or it's there and it says the transaction is committed, and yet this SCN says it's uncommitted. The next person pays that price. Their job, even though they're only reading, is to fix up all the mess that the person that did the update is doing. We call it a delayed block cleanout. Someone else cleans up the mess. And you can see here that most of the stats here are about 67,000. We did 67,000 cleanups. Where's that number come from? Well, if we look at how many blocks are in that table, there's about 67,000. So the commit from the massive update was fast, and someone pays that price later, the next person to actually do a query. If I run the query again, now that they've done all that cleanup, you can see it's back to 1.5 seconds. So as you can see, one person has to pay that price because the person who was, did the update, they got the reward. They got the, uh, the benefit of not having to do the cleanup. Now, why would we do that? Why, if someone has to pay that price anyway, why shouldn't we put it back on the person that actually is shouldering the burden, the person that actually did the update? Well, what we're doing is we're giving you the option. A real common thing that people do massive updates on is delete, delete old data. And of course, what happens to data that's been deleted? Often people never want to query that data again. We do an arc over table and then we forget about it. The table is gone or we do a, a, a huge update and we simply never touch that data again. So we're actually hoping to get lucky here. If you do a huge update on some data and no one ever touches it again, well then we dodged, we, we gained here, we won. We never did that cleanup and we will never have to do it. That's what we call paying never. You know, you get to choose. Luck, you might get lucky and never have to pay that price. That's a good thing. The other thing you can do is now that you know that delayed block cleanout is happening for the person that was doing these big updates overnight, is after you've done your update, you can be the person that then just runs a simple top to bottom query through your table. And that's what I call paying early. So if you know you're doing a huge update and you know that those rows will be visited by customers again anyway, 
after your large update, you should be the person that simply just runs a simple query top to bottom to do that cleanup. And then no one will ever know or no one else has to pay that price because you're taking on the responsibility yourself. But the reason we do this delayed block cleanup is because hopefully we might get lucky and never have to pay that price. And therefore, everybody wins.